Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, especially you with the fancy red coats and the, and the black coats. This day is the culmination of years of perseverance, a day that you and your families will remember forever. I honor you for your commitment. And I know, I suspect that there are many stories here among the people I see in front of me of overcoming great personal odds to achieve what you achieved today. I was getting really a bit depressed with the state of our nation in the last few weeks and months. But seeing you here, looking at you, looking at your faces as you came in, really restored my faith and my hope in our nation. As masters and PhD uh, graduates, you are members of our society's intelligentsia. Intelligentsia is a Russian word, uh, first used in Poland in the mid-1800s to describe the educated and professionally active groupings in society. Today, if you Google the, the word in intelligentsia, the dictionaries will say to you, uh, it means intellectuals who form an artistic, scientific, social, or political vanguard. You, ladies and gentlemen, are in the vanguard of South Africa's quest to develop into a prosperous, caring country and a progressive, open society. You have an important role to play in the ongoing process to undo the wrongs and inequalities of our bitter past. So being a member of society's intelligentsia doesn't necessarily turn you into a noble person. Let me talk to you about two members of our, in our past who were members of the intelligentsia, Dr. D.F. Milan and Dr. H.F. Verwoerd. Dr. Verwoerd actually had two PhDs, but those two men used their intelligence to perfect, to fine tune the evil system of apartheid. Being in a position of power also doesn't make you a member of the intelligentsia. And you know who I'm going to refer to first, Donald Trump. Um, closer to home, we have another example, former President Jacob Zuma, who positively mistrusted intellectuals, insulted them, even those in his own party. The real values of a true intellectual are integrity, honesty, tolerance, open-mindedness, and most importantly, an unending and unconditional search for the truth, because the truth matters. I hope your achievement today will help you further in your process to becoming financially pro prosperous in your personal life. Because financial security gives you the freedom to choose and to live a rich and rewarding life without worrying where your next meal is going to come from. But I hope, I hope your personal financial stability will not blind you to the fact that most fellow citizens in our country live in poverty and many in extreme poverty. I hope you will realize, as our intelligentsia, that this is not government's problem. It is your problem, and it is my problem. It is all our problem. My generation has failed this country. I hope we will not say that about your generation one day. So the word intelligentsia may have uh, been coined in Poland, but that concept is not alien to Africa and to South Africa. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, give you a little story to tell you of one example. You know, life in the 18th century, early 19th century, were rough in these parts, but also elsewhere in the world. Kings and chiefs had absolute power. Women had no, no power whatsoever. Uh, kings and chiefs often used, used military power to show off their prowess, as we men seem to want to do too often. But in 1720, a boy was born not far from here who was to challenge this status quo and create a new African intelligentsia right here in the Free State. His name was Motlomi. He was the son of a 
famous Bokwena chief. When he took over the chief, chiefdom from his father, he started, he started doing things, crazy things, completely different things from all the other chiefs in, in the area. First thing he did was he disbanded his army. He sent his soldiers to work in the fields to say to them, make food rather than war, be better husbands and be better fathers. And all the other people in the, in the subcontinent just looked at this, this man and said, he is weird. We know from people telling the stories to their children and their grandchildren, because Moshlomi died a long time ago, but his legacy lives on, and the word of mouth tells us that his favorite pastime is to have long philosophical discussions with other wise men of his region. And long after his death, people remembered that he pondered the questions that you and I also ponder. Where does the universe begin and where does the universe end? What is the essence of life? How did life start? How was life created? He had a set of proverbs or teachings that have survived that we know of. Um, he said conscience rather than pressure from society or norms dictated by others was man's only guide and monitor of his behavior. He said, if you are kind and generous to others, especially to the fortunate, the unfortunate and the weak, then, Mashlomi said, fate will be your friend. It uh, reminds us of the law, the oriental law of karma. And yet this man died an old man without ever setting eyes on anybody European. His only experiences were African. He lived in the same time as the famous Western philosophers, Montesquieu, Voltaire, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Immanuel Kant. I've been researching uh, Chief Moshlomi's life for years now, and I can easily imagine the four of them, the five of them sitting around a table arguing about Voltaire's statement that if God didn't exist, man would have had to invent him, or Rousseau's statement that man was born free, but everywhere he is in chains. I have a suspicion that they would have been in awe of this philosopher of Africa. Many of Motlomi's sayings became part of Basutu morality, even if so many Basutu don't realize it and don't know who this man was. The one thing he always used to say is, it is better to thrash the corn than to shape the spear. He was a man of peace. He said, peace is my sister. Uh, a sister being a person in society who was in a fragile position and had to be looked after and nurtured. It was him, it was Moshlomi who started the custom that we all know now of when you meet a stranger, you raise your hand and you say Chotso. It was him, it was Moshlomi who started that and it's still alive in regions of our country now. But his most say, famous saying of all, which if you look back at the context was a pure call to democracy at a time when there, no democracy existed in the world. He said, a chief is a chief by the grace of his people, which also happens to be the title of the book that I wrote about him. A chief is a chief by the grace of his people. He was always curious for more information. He traveled long distances. We know he went to southern Mozambique. He went to Zimbabwe and Botswana and Namibia, all over South Africa, walked with a calabash and a kiri, he met all the tribes and groups. He, tried to, he, he learned about new cultures. He spoke many languages. And when in his later years he returned to his kraal near Klokolan, he started a leadership academy to transfer his knowledge to young chiefs and, 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 and aspirant chiefs. And one of his best students, one of his most promising students, was a young man who we later came to know as Mushweshwe. He became the founding father of the Basutu nation and one of the greatest leaders of all time, a leader who stabilized central South Africa during a time of great turmoil in the early 1800s. Unlike his peers of the time who measured their masculinity according to the violence their armies could inflict, Mushweshwe never once made war, but he was also never defeated when he was attacked. If we properly analyze him with our modern knowledge and we look at his life as a chief and a king, it reveals a remarkable and complex statesman 
with an unusual philosophy of leadership and a surprising grasp of the realities and the challenges facing him and his people during that turbulent time of the mid-1800s. He had a vision equal to that of Nelson Mandela a century later. When Nelson Mandela was released in February 1990, about four days later, he phoned me, invited me to his home, and there we talked. And one of the first things he said to me, because he knew where I come from, I'm from this province, this, I grew up uh, as a free state. And he said to me, people will praise me, but I'm following in the footsteps of a man who taught me everything in his name was Morena Moshweshwe. He was a build, nation builder, a diplomat, a strategist, and a pragmatist, at least on a par with the best leaders in Europe and Asia and North America, North America during this time. Few people know that the King of France, um, King Napoleon IV, sent a set of silver pistols all the way from France to Tababusiu to honor King Moshwashwe as the greatest diplomat alive in South Africa at that time. In everything he had done, the influence of the philosopher Mutlomi could be seen. These two men used their minds, their intellect, to change society, not guns or armies or violence or intimidation. They were brave enough to break the trend of their time. They were principled, yet always open to new ideas and modernization. They were strong leaders, but they never lost touch with their people. As a member of South Africa's intelligentsia, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, view Motlomi and Moshweshwe and their contribution as your role models. I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Thank you.